<laughs> right, well, we might as well, might as well say an official good evening. Hello. 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 Welcome. Welcome to Yorkshire Television. And you are welcome to it. Um, welcome to... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, you have faith. Thank you. Uh, welcome to The X Factor. Who's seen The X Factor before? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, not been on before. it's not been on before because this is what we call a pilot show and uh, I'll tell you more about that uh, in just a little while. I'm Greg. Hi. Hi. Um, has anybody ever seen me before? Who, who has seen me before? Right. Who's, who's never ever seen me before? As a person who couldn't give a toss if they've ever seen me before or not, yes, fine. It's nice to know how we're going to be this evening. Um, you are going to see stars this evening! Woo! Oh, ooh, it's so dated now, isn't it? I, I think we'll have a while. Wow. You are going to see stars tonight. Wow. No, I'll have a core bloody hell. Um, you're going to see stars tonight. Wow. Yes, you know, all the common ones over here. That was the loudest one, yeah. Um, you're also going to see the secrets of television. You're going to see how television programmes are made. Well, we... <laughs> no, that, that's not a cool bloody hell. No, no, no that, that's not. Um, it is going to be a very, very exciting evening. Um, all I can say to you is that it is mainly about football and the pools. Now, <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear, we've upset someone already. What's up, what, what? Don't you like watching 22 sweaty, hairy men running around a field? She'd rather run around with them. She'd rather run around with them. It can be arranged. Just you and me later. What's, what's your name? Is the question too bloody difficult or something? What, what, what's your name? Dolly! Oh, hello, Dolly. Um, <laughs> Uh, what? Um, what um, if, in that case, if that's the sort of person you are, you'd like to run around with 22 uh, men. Uh, what is the difference, Dolly, between sex and the chicken leg? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. You're coming on a picnic. <laughs> it's lovely to see you, Dolly. It's lovely to see everybody, particularly you. Um, hello, Pat. Right, here we go. We're going to find out now who we've got in the audience. And uh, what I want you to do when I read you out is to cheer like crazy. Because we want to know what sort of an audience you're going to be. Because it's not too late to chuck you out and get some decent people in if you're rubbish. So here we go. Let's hear it from Ralph Tenchi's party from Leeds Metropolitan University. Yeah! Oh, lovely. Yes, where's Ralph Tench? He's not turned up. He's heard about the show, hasn't he? That's what it is. Who's in charge out of you lot? Sorry? <laughs> Nobody. Nobody's in charge. No one's going to keep order. Great. Okay, there's a challenge. All right, welcome to you. Uh, Shepherd Construction Limited. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Which one of you is Mrs. Shepherd? <laughs> you're Mrs. Shepherd. Hello, Mr. Are, are you the Shepherd of Shepherd? Oh, you're not. So you're another Shepherd. All oh, right. So the whole bunch of you. And, and you're from where? Where are you from? Which, which area? From Leeds. Which, which part? Oh, Ellen Road! Oh, so you'll be into the football business and everything. Really? Did you watch the match yesterday? Yeah, yeah it was crap. Yeah, I was going to put it more delicately, yet, but yes, it was crap, yes. Welcome to Shepherd's Construction, anyway. Um, the Garforth Youth Group! Yeah! Oh, you've shrunk, haven't you? Hello, Garforth Youth Group. Um, who's brought you? Carol Smith. Hello, Mrs. Smith. Your crisps have come. <laughs> Smith's crisps, you see. Start the car. Um, yes. And uh, what, what, the Garfer Youth Group? Garfer, that's not too far away, is it? No, no, easy journey for you. Lovely. Not that there is anything like an easy journey around with these nowadays. Um, finally, the only group I've got left on my list, but we'll find out who else we've got in a moment, the Benefits Agency from Hemsworth! The Benefits Agency. <laughs> Who's in charge? Yeah, hello. Um, when I said my name was Greg Scott, it's actually Salman Rushdie. <laughs> yes. Welcome to you. From from where are you from? Oh, from Hemsworth. Oh, lovely. It's posh in Hemsworth, you know. Has anybody ever been to Hemsworth? Mm. Well, you get out the bath to have a pee. Hemsworth. <laughs> it's really very posh. Um, anybody we've missed? Anybody? Anybody? Because I don't want anybody walking out here, here at the end saying, well, we didn't bother you mention me. Anybody? Anybody want to mention? 
Everybody's been sorted. Right, lovely. Okay. Now then, as I said, it is a pilot show, and I'll explain a little bit about what a pilot show is. Some of you will already know, no doubt. But this is the very first time that the X Factor has ever been done. This show that you're going to see tonight, the bad news is, it isn't going to be transmitted. However, you could help with our future, because if you are a superb audience, because a superb audience will help with the success of the show tonight, if you help with, the, with that success, then you will be a part of bringing the X Factor to national television. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> we plug the chairs in now, shall we, for heaven's sake. Um, so that, that is the key to it. We want you to sound as though you're enjoying yourselves. Now I know there are, I'd say there was a 60-40 ratio in favour of women in the audience, and I know it's about football, I know it's about the pools, but what it is, does anybody watch How Do They Do That? Yeah. How do they, more to the point, if you've seen the programme, why do they do that? But if you've seen that programme, it's virtually about that, but about the pools, alright? So it's an entertainment information programme, and uh, who does the pools? Who does the pools? Stick around if you do the pools. A, a few of you, alright? Well, this is going to be an evening of advice, and um, maybe some different ways of, of, of advising you how to pick your numbers, alright? Now, let me tell you who is on the show. Is everybody... Oh, not, not quite. Okay, well, we'll introduce you to everybody in just a few moments. Meantime, let me introduce you to Val. Val is the floor manager. Say, hi, Val. Hi, Val. Val. Val's going to say some really very important <coughs> things to you right now. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the studio. I've got the exciting things to tell you. That is about safety in the studio. Uh, that's the first thing. If for any reason we do need to leave the studio, I'd like to advise you that... Um, the staircases where you came up at the back, please go down those staircases, or if you come down these staircases, there are fire exits in each of the four corners of the studio. So that's my exciting information for you. And if anybody needs a nurse, we also have a nurse on duty and first aid people, but that's only if you're ill. Okay, folks. <laughs> right, the other thing is as well, we do have the cameras on you quite a few times, so um, Get into practice, because when you come back to do the when we're doing the real series and things, then you'll know what it's all about. And any studio audience, we always say the same thing. There are monitors, but don't look at the monitors. Because I don't know, have you ever noticed when people are on the telly? And they all are dying to see, am I on the telly? And then all we ever do is either see up their nose or sort of, uh, you know, whatever. So, you know, it's always nice to keep looking there. So for future reference, whenever you're in an audience, you know, record it when you get home, don't, because it spoils the surprise. So always stay looking out what's what's going on. Anyway, that's it. That's all I've got to say. When I do that, oh. that's a very important bit. Should we have you practiced it yet? I don't want to go at that. Yeah. yeah. Because your job, I mean, you, you came in for nothing, your tickets were free. Your job is to provide the applause and the cheering and the... And the, the, the what are you on for the programme, all right? So... <laughs> right, here we go then. Sorry. Sorry, there's three people speaking at once. Here we go. So when I do this... That's your cue. So she'll have practice. Okay, then everybody ready? And... Gentlemen, your applause then. I mean, I was listening to you, obviously, and um, some of you are being too polite. Some of you are clapping. We don't. We don't. We don't. to smack them together and make some noise, and also the cheering. If you cheer like this, uh, it, it sounds like it sounds like you're being told to cheer. So you know, we need some. We need some. We need some reality in this cheering. So let's try one more time. Three, two, one. As long, as long as either Val or myself, because I'll be, I'll be around here in the second half of the show, as long as we're waving our arms in the air, you've got to keep going for as long as, as long as we're waving our arms. Because if you don't, then we have to stop and do it all over again. And then, uh, <laughs> anyway, you need no better incentive to applaud and go crazy than 
when I introduce to you now the stars of the X Factor, because they are true stars, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have three, if we go to a series, we'll have three different guests every week giving their predictions as to what they think will be the score draws for that particular week. So, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, would you please welcome Complete with his tarot cards and his Ujima flips and his whatchamacallits. Will you please give a huge round of applause to Mr. Russell Grant! <laughs> said that Dora Bryan knows more about football than Terry Venables. He has been with Yorkshire Television now since since before black and white television. It was when it was just black. He is the Yorkshire Television expert on football, the ITV expert on football, and indeed, if you want to know anything about the game, ask this man. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John Helm! <laughs> Watch a program that goes. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not Richard White. <laughs> I saw a few people go, oh, bloody hell. <laughs> Will you please give it up, make some noise for the gorgeous, and I have to say, I'm not impartial, but she is my favourite member of the panel this evening. Will you please welcome Carol Waterman? <laughs> Legs there. Also, every week we'll have uh, a celebrity guest who will give their special predictions on the uh, on the show. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, do we have any Emmerdale fans? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Who's your favourite characters in uh, Emmerdale at the moment? <laughs> well, okay, the ladies. Uh, yeah, maybe. Who are the fellas? Yeah, she's here. She is here, ladies and gentlemen. Maggie Dingle, otherwise known as Lisa Riley. <laughs> for many, many years, but he can make us laugh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Tom O'Connor! I'm going to round of applause for Greg, who's making over our panel, of course. He's going to be our, our expert, reading out all the scores. Today. Round of applause for Greg. How well you look. I was watching you coming in, you look a smashing audience. Are you all well? Yeah. You look smashing. Particularly if I may say so, the ladies. So I'll have a special hello to all the ladies. Good evening, girls. Yeah. Good to have you with us. The world's most wonderful women in this audience tonight. Isn't that true, fellas? Yeah. Just the three of us. <laughs> now, come on, it's a night out this. Come on, all the husbands in the audience. Where would you be tonight without your wives? How's it going? <laughs> In honour of the ladies, I'm going to do something special. Greg said I can't, I'm allowed to do this. I've got two minutes and I can do it. I'm going, to, I'm going to do something I never do. I'm going to tell a joke. Now, I never tell jokes, right? But this is one. This is a, a, it's not a white joke, by the way, and it's not a bothering old joke. This is the joke about the lady who won £7.5 million on the lottery. And the press come to the house and they said, how do you feel? She said, what do you mean? They said, are you excited? She said, I'm over the moon. They said, is it going to make any difference to your life? She said, in what way? They said, well, like, will you give up work? She said, oh, I'll give up work. Oh, why, yeah. They said, what about your husband? She said, what about him? He said, will he give up work as well? She said, why, does he want something? So, <laughs> there'll be stories like that during the course of the evening, and what we want you to do is sit back and enjoy yourselves. You'll do that, won't you? Yeah. 
Yeah. And we want you, I mean, ignore the fact that there's cameras here. This show's for you. We're going to have some fun. If, you, if it's funny, laugh. You know what I mean? Enjoy yourselves. You've come in for nothing, but laugh as if you've paid. You know what I mean? <laughs> You'll do that, won't you? I mean, and, and, and the other good thing is that as we go along, you, you join in. I mean, we're going to have some terribly corny things. We're going to say, you know, all them corny things. Here. And, and you know what, the ones where you feel like going, uh, well, do it. <laughs> if, you, if someone says, oh, and we're in the pools this week, and we're on the deep end of the pool, you're, uh, do it. That's it, you make a lot of noise. Okay? Well, whatever you do, enjoy yourselves, but most importantly, be yourselves. You know what I mean? Talk normal. If we talk to you, answer back normal. There's nothing worse than coming to a do, and you're not sure if everyone around you is the same as us. Because you know what happens, we all end up talking posh. <laughs> People say, are you enjoying ourselves? And you say, oh, hi. <laughs> Just been reading the Daily Mirror. And <laughs> we want you to enjoy yourselves. I gather most of you are from Yorkshire, is this right? Most of Yorkshire, my wife says she's from Keithley, and, and it's always nice to have a Yorkshire audience, because you're lovely people, Yorkshire. And, and, and it wasn't until this summer, do you know this, Greg? And where are you from? I didn't ask you where you're from. Originally, oh, from Cheshire, were they? Oh, well, then, there's no accounting for it. Uh, but <laughs> but no, I, it wasn't until this summer I realised, you know what they call Yorkshire people in Blackpool? Seriously, you know what they call Yorkshire people? About comforts. This fellow said, we call Yorkshire people comforts. I said, why is that? He said, comfort day, comfort day. <laughs> We'll find out where the rest of you are from later on, but right now we're going to crack into the show. Are you going to take, while well, I go and get my up? You'll have a bit of a chat. Enjoy the show, thanks for coming, and there'll be lots of prizes at the end, as you know. The free drinks will be coming round. Two glasses of lager and straws. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. to warn you about. Has anybody watch Noel's House Party? Yes. Yes. Well, two things I've got to tell you. First of all, you may think, once you've seen the programme, that this is a gotcha. Yeah. It's not. Um, <laughs> secondly, secondly, uh, this camera here, this one here, this is called a Jimmy Jib. I don't know why it's called a Jimmy Jib. But uh, for certain parts of the show, when these lights come on, at certain points, these lights will go whack on you now. I mean, you'll be in darkness. But when we want to take a shot of you, they'll go whack. And... The temptation is, when they go whack, they will go, oh, good, gee. <laughs> Don't make a noise, whatever you do, because everyone, everyone at home will know if this goes out. Uh, but the lights have come on. Then, the Jimmy Jib. Did anybody watch the Grab a Grand bit on Noel's house party? Yeah. And that camera sort of whoops across the top of it and goes whoosh and over and everything like that. That's what that camera's going to do, like this sort of thing. This sort of thing. It's going gonna, it's gonna to whoosh. That's the technical term for it, isn't it, Colin? Yeah, it's whoosh. It's going to whoosh over the top of your head. There you are, there you are. You can look at yourselves on telly now. But when you see grab a grand on the telly, everybody stands up and goes, Rrr! and you look like, right, prat. So if you can just look nice, look posh, and don't slouch, please. You must have done the weekend now. So there we are. That's what you look like on telly. You can wave now. Well, give yourselves a wave now. Rrr! Yes, yes lovely. Right. Oh, wait. Yeah, we, we, we don't want you to look as though there's any gaps, we want to look like a popular programme. So, yeah, fill up any gaps. Doesn't it look good, doesn't it? Doesn't it look fantastic? Those cameras, I mean, doesn't that camera make things look bigger? The woman just said to her husband, you can probably do one of them. Right. So there we are. We're very nearly ready to go. Any time you see Val go like that, applause. If you feel there's a need to applaud, if anybody says anything funny, and it, oh, you, we've done the we, we've done the waving bit now. You can stop. That, that is you there, there. That, that, go do it again. There. Get the naughty over, friends. Sad, isn't it? I bet you were upset when Ted that broke up. You two, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, hello. Of this, all this lot here. I think you could be right Oh, oh by the way, normally, I, I normally work on Countdown. We have a much smaller audience on Countdown. And all the seats are solid, you know, they don't move, they don't flip up when you, when you, when you stand up. And we can do, what we do on Countdown, just before the show starts, to get everybody's blood flowing and everything. We do a Mexican wave, so everybody goes, oh, hey! And, uh, and I did it in here once, with these seats. And I forgot that they flip up, and everyone went, hey! <laughs> Let's do it. Um, uh, we could do it, if you sort of keep one hand on there, we could do it. 
Um, there's one more thing I've got to tell you, something really important. Oh yeah, yeah, Tom said about groaning, but if you, th if you think something is funny, we cannot pick up smiles on the microphone, so do laugh. If it, even if it's just a... Uh, you know, I have to explain this when I'm working on Countdown about Richard Whiteley's jokes. Because what, what I've got, I've got a script. I've got a script of all these jokes. And what I do, I sort of stand to one side. You'll never watch Countdown again in the same light. I sort of stand to one side. And where it says, where it says, da 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 da, on my script it says end of joke. Now, obviously, being written whitely, the audience don't know when it's the end of the joke. <laughs> so I sort of stand to one side and I go, da da da, end of joke, and no, nah, everybody laughs. <laughs> You'll never watch Countdown again without picturing this Burke in a jacket going, <laughs> like that. Never again. <laughs> We're nearly there. We are in danger of starting in just a moment. The opening of the program will have the opening titles, and then it's your applause. So let's try it. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, the applause that you are going to give for this magnificent production, The X Factor. So here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, opening titles are just finishing, and you're about to erupt into a cacophony of sound. Three, two, one. <laughs> Sort of going, instead of going, and it going, Ooh. if it could go, like that, that would be lovely. Thank you. Ooh, lovely audience. You can all come back to my place. Yeah. This, in fact, is going to be show three. So we're going to be showing three. By the way, you've already seen two shows. <laughs> so when, when we say well, last week, don't say what the bloody hell is he talking about. <laughs> Yeah, Joanna Lumley's been on. It's been three weeks, actually. We've had... Uh, yeah. Sean Bean. Sh Sean Bean's Sean Bean been on. Leslie Ash. Leslie Ash and, and Joanna Lumley and somebody else. Bruce Nick Berry. Nick, Nick Berry. So, you don't say what, you know, what the hell, what's all this. It's show five or something, this. So, you all know what's going on, right? I think it's five. Don't ask questions when we're doing it. Because we don't know. <laughs> Bruce Cromwell's got every result right. Got every one right. <laughs> so they didn't know he was fiddling until they asked him to let the new year in and he wanted 10,000 quid. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't know Merson was in trouble till he went up for a corner and never came down. <laughs> <laughs> I won't do them on the night, John. You're all right. <laughs> stand, by for the, stand by for the Ritz. I'm leaving it up to you now. Right, here goes nothing. Okay, children, have a good one. Head down, swing slow. Yes. <laughs> so, you could end up here with QPR winning the, the Ensley League <laughs> Premiership. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll keep doing that to make sure I can... And uh, Britain's soccer teams let us down badly. I mean, what is the point of our underpaid experts selecting ten score draws yeah. when our overpaid players can only muster nine? Nevertheless, here they are, last week's score draws. Uh, Oldham against Charlton, that was one all, as was Reading against Leicester, Notts County against Shrewsbury, or Shrewsbury, and Colchester <laughs> against Darlington. Northampton against Doncaster, that was a little more exciting, three all in that one. Plymouth one, Barnet one was the final score, and then north of the border for the final three score draws, Dunfermline two, Dundee United two, Hamilton one, Clydebank one, and East Fife one, Air United one. Well, they are. East 5-5, five, five, 4 far, so far, 4. Now, <laughs> <coughs> I know Carroll tipped against Liverpool, but how many draws did she actually cop? 
overall. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> well, uh, Miss Vorderman, yes, not too bad, really. Uh, Reading won, Leicester won, was yes. one of your score draws. Oh, yes. Uh, Colchester won, Darlington won, mm -hmm. Plymouth won, Barnet won, and Hamilton won, Clydebank won. So, four score four, draws all together for Miss Vorderman. Thank you. Well done, four. Well done. Yeah. And who would have odds, Carol, dear, that you'd get four one ones? I mean, you'd have some money against that, wouldn't you? Four uh, well, you would have thought so, but four, that's fantastic. You see, my computer <coughs> is on form at the moment. I'd like you uh, to take note of that, OK? Right. I'll put okay. a different chip four in it, you see, Tom. Yes, indeed. Yes. I won't tell you which type of oven chip it was, but <laughs> Carol came <laughs> good last week. How did Mr Helm compare, Greg? Mm, Mr. Helm. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, Reading won, Leicester won. That was that one again. Uh, Colchester won, Darlington won, and Dunfermline two, Dundee United two. So three score draws for John Helm. Good. <laughs> so I mean, not bad for an expert. Three. No, no in footballing parlance, I'm as sick as a parrot at losing out to Colonel Musket yeah, here. Four, three, four, three. <laughs> you wait. You count down that lead yes. later. Oh. We'll, we'll see later. Hot shot, Helm scores another hat-trick, but did Russell manage to rustle up any more than that? Greg? Well, we'll start by not mentioning Bolton against Manchester United, which you can see there, because uh, you said that would be a score draw, Russell, and yeah, it ended you up... That, you said that's not mention it, so why mention it? Shut your We're door. mentioning it. <laughs> We're mentioning it. 6-0 in Manchester United's favour. <clears throat> um, but score draws, there was a success rate somewhere. Reading 1, Leicester 1, okay. Northampton 3, Doncaster 3, and East Fife one Air United one, so three score draws for Mr. Russell. Thank well, you. Well, well, well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I think I think you were unlucky with the Bolton result because for the first twenty seconds Bolton were all over them and then they <laughs> broke away. <laughs> But the East Fife and Air one was a, a great draw, draw to, to call because, I mean, there's top of the league versus the bottom there. Yeah, I was over the moon about that one. Over the moon, but you would be. <laughs> I'd have got more, but Mercury went retrograde and I went kaput. Is that normal? Oh, my word. <laughs> more about Mercury later. Hold the phone. If you followed the composite of our experts' choices last week, you should certainly have got four score draws, and they are Reading 1, Leicester 1, Colchester 1, Darlington 1, Northampton 3, Doncaster 3, Dunfermline 2, Dundee United 2. So that means that... Overall, John is out in front with 13 score draws over the past month. Russell lying a handy second, and Carol, despite four scores draw, uh, draws last Saturday, <laughs> in third. <laughs> so well done. Now, the weather certainly didn't seem to affect the results last week, even though there seems to have been a depression over Elland Road and high pressure over the time. But what about the climactic circumstances come this Saturday? For an up-to-the-minute report, here's our weather girl, who recently, in fact, proposed to her boyfriend on television to find out what happened. Over to Debbie Lindley. Well, actually, Tom, he did accept, and here's the ring to prove it, so I trust I'll see you all at the wedding. Well, it's quite a miserable outlook, really. Lots of drizzle around, especially down there in London, which reminds me that Dozzle hasn't been playing particularly well for Spurs this season. Towards the western part of the country, it should be fairly dry, which is a reason why Blackburn's rain has come to an end. Up towards the northeast there, we can see it staying fairly cloudy, which may come as a bit of a shock to Branco, the Brazilian football star. He's making his debut for Middlesbrough against Everton this afternoon. Still, I think he'd fancy it less if he was playing in the South End Norwich game. Apparently there's sleet on the way down there. So I think there's a sleet chance that both sides will accept for a draw. Up towards Scotland, and it should be staying fairly dry, so there's no need to don your max in Aberdeen. And in the northwest, the outlook is fairly bright. But does that mean it'll be staying for Sheffield Wednesday? That's all for this week. The general outlook then, quite drizzly and quite wet, lots of rain around, so there's a good chance there'll be some pools forecast. That's all for this week. Join me next week for some more weather tips. Thank you, Debbie. And would you believe, seriously and genuinely, she proposed to a Mr. Wright. After all them puns, quite right. The best, all the best, of course, for Debbie's forthcoming match, but now it's time for the forecast from someone who doesn't care whether it's rain or shine, as long as her computer's fine. Yes, sir. Stats, my baby. Carol Vorderman. <laughs> It's wearing 
in Richard Whiteley's jackets that does it, Tom, <laughs> I tell you. OK, well, after my very long overdue success last week, I am definitely on a roll. Not only have I put a, a new chip in, it was a bit dodgy, the last one. I've got new batteries in the computer, too. So watch out, John Helm. Thank you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very, very confident about my selections this week. So, let's get on with them. This is where it gets technical, boys, by the way. This graph, now, this shows all the games being played in the English leagues this weekend. Okay, we start over here. We've got the Premier League, First Division, Second Division, and Third Division, and so on. Right, now, each column relates to a particular match, and the higher the column, the more likely the draw. Now, you can see the difference here. We've got the highest column. That's Swansea, Bristol City, and the lowest, which is down here, that's Preston against Rochdale. Now, here's the same thing relating to all the Scottish league matches. Now, you probably notice that there are more smaller columns here, which indicates that draws in Scotland are generally less likely. Oh. That's a map of New York. Draws in Scotland. Mention a kill stone. You know, it's hard work, this. The lowest column, now where's that one gone? That's down here, right? That is Dundee, Dumbarton. Only a 19% chance of a draw with that. So shy away from that. Don't go for that one, Russell. Well, Don't go for that, John. No, we're no, going to miss it out. Okay, we'll now putting all of that together, I've come up with this. I've been working hard over the weekend, I tell you. This delightful little model shows 10 games which I think are most likely to produce a draw. Now, from the Premier League, we've got uh, this one here. That's uh, Middlesbrough against Everton. But the draw banker in the Premier League, that's QPR against Arsenal. A little bit of information. It may have something to do with the fact that they've actually drawn seven out of the last ten games they've played between them. Excuse me, just <laughs> pay attention. You might learn something here. <laughs> <laughs> now, looking further along, we have Norwich uh, from Division 1. Then there's uh, Brighton-Brentford game, which looks a good bet. Brighton have drawn three of their last four home games. And from Scotland, I've only got two games in the selection. So finally, I promise this really is the final bit. My pick of the week. Hot tip, Tom. Hot tip. Swansea versus Bristol oh. City. What, do you mean? what are you laughing at? Swansea, Swansea Bristol City. 35.8% chance of a draw. This has got draw written all over it. Swansea have had more home draws and Bristol City more away draws than any other side in Division 2. Thank you. I cannot go wrong. But I've said that before, haven't I? You have. Yeah. You have. <laughs> Can read the papers tomorrow. It always worries me that if they've had that many draws, aren't they due for a result now? <laughs> <laughs> But by the by, Carol, uh, seriously, I'm looking yeah. at you there, you're a vision, yeah. naturally, and I've always <laughs> thought you were destined to be on this show. Oh, did you? Predestined, did you really? in fact. And I tell you what, because I was what? reading in a certain uh, Sunday newspaper mm. supplement recently, mm. a certain story about you. Shall I? What? Do you mind if I quote? <laughs> which story? Uh, well, uh, which one's this year? All right. Here's the quote. I'll never forget my first real drama. Yeah. I saw the face at the window and went raving mad. And then it goes on. It was just before I reached the first door that I noticed a pane of glass missing, and then, just as it clicked what was happening, I saw a face peer through the window. I went raving mad. Completely lost my temper. You couldn't print what I said. I can't tell you how many four-letter words I used. Oh, that was a burglar. They were burgling my house, and I walked in on them. Well, there they are. Yeah. And that's, that's why you And it's destined. absolutely true, but I do not see what that has to do with this programme. I'm sorry. Why, well, why you're destined to be on the show is that yeah. you showed the burglars the door. I did. And you're about to show us how to win a fortune on the pools, hopefully, because here comes Vaud at the board with her <laughs> prediction. <laughs> My Australian roots. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my top ten. Top ten. Middlesbrough, Everton, QPR and Arsenal, Southend, Norwich, Bournemouth, Oxford United, Brighton and Brentford. Brentford's your uh, home team. Uh, Russell, Swansea, Bristol right. City, Leighton Orient, Colchester, Plymouth, Gillingham, Motherwell and Falkirk, and Partick Thistle and Arith Rovers. Those are the ones. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. Beautifully done. Now, the form of our guest celebrities over the last month certainly has been up and down. I mean, as you can see, Leslie Ash, obviously with inside knowledge from husband Lee Chapman, selected four score draws. Then Nick Berry had three, Joanna Lumley one, and Sean Bean wasn't so sharp, he registered naught. But this week we welcome an actress who, as a member of the Dingle family, has certainly helped Emmerdale consolidate its position as one of Britain's favourite TV shows. What happened last night? 
Can't you remember, man? You nearly polished off me mum's creme de mon. Then Ryan Giggs comes round in this big white horse and whisked you upstairs for a night of passion. <laughs> what are you done with him, eh? <laughs> Come on, Ryan, I know you're in there. Oh. Get your kit on, time to go. Oh, Tina, I feel a bit fragile. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lisa Riley, alias Mandy Dingle. And, of course, a fine actress as you are, and a lovely lady as well, and, and a little bit of an expert on, on football, because a lot of the family do the pools, don't they? That's correct, all my family, on the, the male side, they all do the pools every week. Okay, and you've, you've made uh, ten predictions for us this week. That's correct. Now, how did you do it? Uh, on the family's birthdays, Right. Used. So, I mean, you've got a big family then, with ten of them, isn't it? Yeah. No, not as many as the Dingle family, because they go on forever, don't they? Oh, it was they? about 95 of the Dingles. And they're, st <laughs> and they're still moving in, she <laughs> said. <laughs> so, yeah, family birthday. So, that, 53 is interesting, then. That's right. <laughs> 53rd of January. 53rd of January was your dad, was he? I see, right. <laughs> OK. Let's see what other strange birthdays we have. Here we go with the Dingle Mingle. Shout them out, Mandy. Here we go. Uh, that's number three, Manchester City v Blackburn. Number eight, Wimbledon v Chelsea. Number nine... Birmingham v Sheffield United, number 12, Portsmouth v Charlton, number 19, Brighton v Brentford. Yay! Yeah. And number 24, Peterborough v Chesterfield, oh, number 25, Swansea, Swansea v Bristol yeah. City, yes. number 38, Scarsborough v Hartlepool, That's Scarsborough, uh, yes, that'll be Scarborough. Well. Yes. <laughs> 50 Air uh, United v Berwick and 53 Sterling v East Fife. Oh. There you are. Great selections and thank you, Lisa Riley. Yeah. I have the utmost confidence in your selections, I really do, Lisa. Thank you, you will do very well, I'm sure you will. <laughs> We're about to take a break, folks, but in part two, the views of a few other experts. Well, uh, well, we have heard from uh, from that wonderful uh, Carol Vodafone, and uh, 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 but I, I'm not too sure about that nice lad uh, Russell uh, with his tarot cards. I can tell you. <laughs> so he'll be here. <laughs> so will Russell and John, and two real life pools winners who'll tell us how they came up dividends. We'll see you very soon. In fact, right after this. Tom, 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 Tom. Have you seen that? Who writes them? Mummy, why aren't my hands as soft as yours? Because <laughs> you're a bricklayer, son. <laughs> Who writes them? It's a Bobby's job, isn't it? I mean, I, it wasn't like that years ago. All the older members of the audience, there's a couple in here I know, two days younger than God, and... <laughs> they remember when television used to be television. You remember them old days? You remember those days when we had lace-up sets? When entertainment was entertainment, you youngsters missed all that. In fact, do you know what worries me now? Not you, because there are some youngsters in the audience here, but I worry for the little ones. I don't think the little ones of Britain are having as much fun, even as the 18 and 19 year olds had, and I had when we were kids. Do you remember when you were a kid and you didn't need Action Man or My Little Pony? Do you remember that, Greg? Do you remember when, do you remember when fun was now? 
you remember those wonderful days that when you were about four and someone showed you how to put your hand under your arm and go, <laughs> remember that? <laughs> you couldn't buy that now, you couldn't buy that, could you? I was 19. <laughs> oh, he, he wants the A.V. Cohen story. Oh, God. Do you remember, you remember last century when I told the story about Bob Paisley? Well, what happened was he signed this Jewish player and they said, is he orthodox or unorthodox? And, and he said, why? He said, because he said, if he's orthodox, he won't be able to play on a Saturday. And Paisley said, God, I've got ten like that already, you see. <laughs> it was only a throwaway. But uh, no, it, it's true. This, this, I love this kind of show because it's a bit of fun. And you're they're joining in very well, aren't they? Oh, yeah. You really are. Yeah. So if, you, if there's anything, you know, just bubble in, shout, you know, all that, great. You're smashing. You, and you look at a nice audience as well. My kind of people. Drunks. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, Oliver Reed. I, lo I love drunks to you. Do you know my favourite conversation was two fellas in the pub and one said, well, the wife will be on the plane now. His mate said, is she going abroad? He said, no, she's taken half an inch off the kitchen door. I love that. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? That? That's my favourite, that. There's that one and the Irish road sign that said, wasn't that a terrible bend back there? I like that one. <laughs> right, I'll shut up now, all right. <laughs> It's got, I'm very impressed, I'm very, what a lovely audience, yeah, I wish I had an act. <laughs> Let me. Yes. Thank you. Welcome back. Now, before we catch up with John Helm and his predictions, let's hear some personalities' views on the biggest corruption case to hit football since Roy of the Rovers threw his last four games for Melchester. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder if he'll ever be able to get Bruce's job with a sorted out of the club, but not as a goalkeeper. I'll have to think about this. Uh, yes, I think uh, there's no doubts of it. Bruce will be considered for the job as a club treasurer. <laughs> and hopefully things will work out for him. Oh, oh, I don't believe this. No, he's just come out the ticket office with a bag. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame about Bruce being accused of uh, such a, an allegation, but uh, these things happen in football and a really a very depressing sort of a situation, isn't it? Uh, football could do without it, but uh, that's his life, isn't it? Click. <laughs> Well, it's unfortunate when people like Bruce get accused, but uh, things will always go missing. And, um, and uh, when you can put that back, son, uh, unfortunately, you know, he was in the, the wrong place. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time. But let's hope he's in the right place at the right time the next time it happens. Ah, I've had enough of this Brucey situation. I want to get down to some real betting. Talk about the real issues of today. I want to talk about uh, Kerry Grant's tarot cards. I'm a little uh, interested in that. And, and John Watson's view as well. So it's over to you, Tony. Uh, just a correction there. Uh, my name is not Tony. Uh, nobody has considered the X factor in all of this. Uh, and I'm hoping for enough Xs to win the next election. Yeah. Very good. The views and the voices of the very talented Mr. Kevin Connolly. Well, now it's time to hear from the man who literally puts the X into expert, John Helm. Thank you, Tom. 
Well, I'm afraid I'm still reeling from being beaten by Carroll last week, so I'm going for dead search this week. Teams that never, ever let you down. I mean, can you honestly see Coventry against West Ham being anything other than a score draw? It's Brian Robson's Middlesbrough against Joe Royal at the new Riverside Stadium, and I really do fancy Everton to get a point out of that one. Now, this has got to be the worst strip in football. Would you be seen dead in that Birmingham City outfit, honestly? It's got to be the worst in the league. And it didn't do them any good either against Leeds in the Coca-Cola Cup. Watch out for Tony Yeboa scoring here. But when you know the goalkeeper's called Bart Greeming, do you wonder either? Barry Fry has to introduce the players to one another before the kick-off every week. Anyway, you'll remember the keeper's name, won't he? Bart Greeming. There's only one Bart Greeming. I think, uh, give me a B, give me an A. Give me an a. <laughs> I think Sheffield United are going well enough to get a point. Yeah. Right, I don't like normally picking on goalkeepers. They've got to be mad to do the job, really. But I've gone for Stoke against Barnsley next because if your name's Mark Prudhoe, switch off now, please. Honestly, this is horrible. And I reckon that poor old lad Mark Prudhoe did actually close his eyes here. Watch this for goal of the week coming up. Own goal of the week, I should say, really. I'd love to think what Lou Macari said to him in the testimony <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> that, that's a belter, isn't it? Next, I'm going to go for Carlisle against Stockport. Don't ask me why, it just sounds like a score draw. Carlisle United won, Stockport County won. Having said that, it's probably going to be 6 0. I really hope, though, that Scunthorpe score a goal or two at Bury. I've nothing against Bury, mind you. It's just that I love to see Sonny Scunny celebrate a goal. <coughs> Look at them here, bless their little cotton socks. Yeah. They, sp <laughs> they spend more time practicing that than they do free kicks. <laughs> I reckon they should sign Chris Waddle, don't you, after all that? Mansfield against Barnet next. Andy King's manager of Mansfield. Ray Clements, he's the boss at Barnet. They used to play against each other in the Merseyside derby, so this may seem small beer by comparison. Ray's just been named manager of the month. That's always the kiss of death. And Andy's just been given a vote of confidence, so he'll be out of a job next week. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon they'll both be happy to settle for a draw. Now, if I had to pick just one match out of all the lot as an absolute banker, it would have to be Scarborough versus Hartlepool. They're sick of the sight of one another. It's the fourth time they've met this season. Hartlepool have been to Scarborough, I reckon, more times than Max Jaffa. And they went to a penalty shootout in the Coca-Cola and a 1-1 draw in the league. Now, this is what happened the last time Sunderland went to play at Grimsby Town. I think they should have been wearing galoshes rather than uh, football boots here. Splash down at 3 o'clock again this week. They did bring the subs on in the second half. <laughs> and I think both teams will get to bog down in another close match. Well, they met a few weeks ago, and this is what Grimsby manager Brian Laws had to say afterwards. It was a bit dogged in the first half, and I thought, you know, we defended in numbers well, because they did put us under the, under the cosh for the first 45 minutes. Hmm. I have to stress, the cosh he refers to there has nothing to do with dressing room bust-ups and Italian strikers. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, four far your favourite, versus Stenhouse Muir, for no other reason that it reminds me of the old Everton manager, Gordon Lee. You remember him, Tom? He was checking the coupon one week, he was doing rather well until a certain Scottish club let him down, since when I'm afraid he's always referred to them as Stenhouse Bleeding Muir. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Joe, well done. Well done. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to well done, John. And Bart Greeming, come on, what a name, oh. Bart Greeming. Is it, have you, have I've got we, an anagram of that, actually. Go on, then. I reckon it's bargain market, or market bargain, whichever you want. Well, if I stick, if, if you can put an extra M in, I've got Immigrant Burke. <laughs> That's, probably, that's probably about right, actually. And poor old Prudho letting that goal in, wasn't oh. that? Poor old, I remember the Bill Shankly story about a player who did something like that, and he said, he's a very good player, half a million wouldn't buy him. He said, I and I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> John, John, if you'd just like to quickly go through your predictions again, here they come, John's oh. top ten. OK, Tom, it's Coventry against West Ham, Middlesbrough against Everton, Birmingham, Bart Greeming and all against Sheffield United, Grimsby Sunderland in the water, Stoke against Barnsley, Carlisle against Stockport, Berry versus Sonny Scunny, Mansfield versus Barnet, Scarborough versus Hartlepool, and Forfar versus Stenhouse Muir. Well done. The experts half convinced me, I must admit. Now, in football, there's no gain without pain. And here, York City manager Alan Little tells his team to get to grips with the opposition. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I can feel that from here. Now, it's time to meet someone who adds fashion to the show. Mind you, you should see his home strip. 
the man who certainly knows his Aries from his elbow, Russell Grant. <laughs> And the, delight, the delightful colours, you do look well in blue. Well, thank you very much indeed. This is actually the Hillingdon Barra Jumper. This is the big time. The only Hillingdon Barra Jumper. They play in the Middlesex Spartan League, and in fact, they've got a crunch match on Tuesday. So good luck to all the boys down there in Middlesex. They're playing Cockfosters. Oh, they are. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> a real needle mass that'll be. Now, is that on the Russell? <laughs> it's not on the coupon yet. It's not yet. on the coupon, no. <laughs> Next year. <laughs> it's not in the paper. So, <laughs> Russell, if you'd like to give us a few tips, you're going to go over to your astro map? I'm going to go over to okay. the astro map. Wow. I am, Tom. Right. My home strip. Da -da -ba -da -da. Da -da -da -da. That's my home strip. But now for my home tips for you all. Now, yesterday, the moon in Gemini was an aspect to Venus and Aries. Now, you know what this part of the show is all about. It's not about drawers or soccer. It's about you. This is me telling you who are the lucky signs of the week. So, if you yesterday filled in your coupon and you were Gemini or Aries, then you're in for a chance. So let's stick our little suns on Gemini and also on Aries because you're two of my lucky signs of the week. Now today, the moon is in Cancer, opposing Jupiter in Capricorn. So fill in your coupons if you're a Cancerian. Okay, let's, gonna, let's put a little... Uh, Cancer, that's you, John, isn't yes, it? Yes, that's me. Oh, is that you? I'm a lucky man today. But the yeah. big, you might be lucky, but Carol is even luckier because you see tomorrow, <laughs> Mars is in Pisces, so we're going to give Pisces also one of our little sunny suns. And it's in a good aspect to Jupiter in Capricorn, and the sun is also in Pisces, and Jupiter is in Capricorn, one of the luckiest aspects you can get. So, here we are. Capricorn! We've got Capricorn up here, and that's yes. you, Carol. Amazing. So, Capricorn, Pisces, Aries, Gemini, Cancer, you are my lucky signs of the week. So you should get a little bit of boodle coming your way. Oh, I love Ooh. a bit of boodle. Let's have a little <laughs> shuffle. <laughs> da -da -da -da. Right, no, you stop it, Carol. I know you Capricorns, you saucy wench. Let's <laughs> Let's see what numbers. Now, you know, guys, gals, this is... I sound like Jimmy Savile there, guys, gals. This is... Um, in, in all of these Astro Tarot cards, there is a number on each of these cards that corresponds to a number on our map. So let's see what the old cosmic numbers are going to produce. Are you ready? Yay. Yes. Yes, Russell. Right, right, here we go. Number one. Oh. Jack of diamonds. It's the sun. Beautiful. <laughs> the number 19. Let's see what 19 reveals here. And it is Brighton Yay! and Love Albion versus Brentford. That That's tallies with you. I got that My too. team Brentford. Yes. There we are. Okay. Here we go. Number two. And it's the devil. Temptation. Ooh. Number 15. Ooh. Card number 15 corresponds to number 15 on my map. And that gives you Stoke City yes. versus Barnsley. Even with that goalkeeper in. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because of that goalkeeper. Yeah, because of that goalkeeper. Card number three, we have the sign of Scorpio. So you Scorpios out there, you're a special sign this week. And it's number 33. Let's see what 33 brings us. 33, 33 gives us Hereford United versus Northampton Town. Here we go. Isn't it exciting? Yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> Temperance, number 14. 14 gives us Southend United and Norwich City. Yes, that, oh yes. No one of yours, Capricorn darling? City. Here we go. Yes, lucky Capricorn. Yeah, We're that's all that's tallying it. here. The snake. If you're born under the Chinese sign of the snake, you are special this week. Number 43 gives us Motherwell versus Fulker. Yeah, I've got that too. <laughs> <laughs> She's getting more excited than me. <laughs> <laughs> here we've got that's the dragon. The dragon is another Chinese sign. If you're born on the sign of the dragon, very special. But 42. 42 is going to give us Celtic versus Hearts. No. Our next one here is 57. A variety of matches to choose from Ooh. and let's see what it gives <laughs> us 57 is going to reveal east stirlingshire and brecon city lots of scots here you scots are going to do well for us and we've got number 30 which is the sign of leo so you leos are very special number 30 is going to give us the match of chester city versus cardiff city <sighs> and number nine we've got number eight card and that's the justice card and number eight is going to give us wimbledon versus 
Chester, well, they're all over the place. Wimbledon, they're playing Cardiff Chester. and they're playing Wimbledon. They're going to be busy <laughs> boys, aren't they? <coughs> one's in the Premier yes, League, one's in the third <laughs> division. <laughs> <laughs> Who's done this rock? That's map a big surprise, mine, anyway. Well, it's not ordnance survey. You can't get the staff, anyway. <laughs> and in my last one. <laughs> Did they know they've been relegated two divisions? <laughs> You know, there's a backlog, but this is ridiculous. So, <laughs> come on. Who are you? I was on a roll then. I've lost you were it. on a roll. Don't worry. You're going very well. Very impressed. <laughs> That's okay. funny. Wimbledon yes. versus Chester. Cup tie. What's with the cup? Yeah. <coughs> You'll never believe in horoscopes again now, will you? Looking at Jupiter. Jupiter. Oh, my God. That's oh. your first time. <laughs> No, it's that chest, that's the other chest. Whoever did that map. So, I'm going to have a bad day tomorrow, I know I'm not, so I'll shuffle the back. <laughs> <laughs> this is tough as a Scorpio, you've been doing that for years. <laughs> it's a good job I noticed it, I thought. I got you, it was, was good, well done. <laughs> Lovely pair of chesters. So we're going Better from Leo. Yeah, yeah he's right. Bristol's. Could have been Bristol's, as uh, John says it. <laughs> Just Bristol. Anyway, we'd have that one week. Here we are. Well, we'll have that one week. Yeah. Arsenal. Oh, <laughs> Going to be running all over Britain. <laughs> <laughs> they can hardly make it round Chester, let alone Britain. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got to be hungry to live in Chester, haven't you? Uh, nice stadium there, the Diva. Nice. It is actually, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, we're a bit knowledgeable. <laughs> They'd have been disappointed if it hadn't broken down, wouldn't they? Yeah, they would. Know. Too close. The trouble is, if number eight comes up as a draw now, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. far too well. Yeah. If number eight comes up as a draw now, you've got a lot of people to answer to here, Greg. <laughs> see, we know there are people who come to shows to see mistakes, and we don't want to let them down. Exactly. <laughs> so that's why I'm here. <laughs> yes. I do love. It. Uh, uh, have we got a minute? I'll just talk. And can I? I'll talk to you. Not Avi Cohen. Not Avi Cohen again. I, no, I do love audiences. You know when, when I'm doing a cabaret act, and you come on, I particularly when you're doing something like out. Butlins, oh, where really? everyone's having a good time, they've had a few beers and that, you know what I mean, and they're relaxed and all, they're throwing them down the necks. And because you do quizzes, they want to ask you quiz questions, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I, I was walking on to, to Butlins and Bethelli, it's a big yeah. room, this, right? And I haven't even got to the mic, and this fellow went, here you are, question. <laughs> I haven't even said good evening. I said, pardon? There's question. Sport. I said, I do crosswords. Sport. <laughs> He said, Joe Louis, Muhammad Ali, Rocky Marciano, Sugar Ray Robinson. I said, they were all world champion boxers. He said, all right, smarty. Who was the first one to wear white gloves? I said, I don't know. He said, Al Jolson. I just come on. I'll tell you what is a good question. The, the, the lads will probably know the answer. Do you know the only, the only survivor of the yeah. Manchester United <laughs> Munich crash who's still playing in the Premier League? Do you, know, do you know who it is? Go on. It's, 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 uh, what's Leeds goalie's name? John Lukic. Lukic. Well, his mother was a hostess right. on the plane. She was, yeah. And she was, happy, she, she was expecting with him. Yeah, it's true, that. It is, that's it's true. a good question. It is a good question. Yeah. So there you are. Not a lot of people knew that today, did they? <laughs> Tell you what, if she did her own hair, I wouldn't let her touch mine. <laughs> hey? What did I say? Oh. You're in trouble. Thank God you missed that. Bloody hell. I'll tell you what I was going to say before. You know when we had to toss up at Crosswitz? Well, we had a floor manager who was new. Uh, the lady we had was ill, and they brought this chap, and all he'd ever done in his life was floor manage the news. Now, you know the news. You don't have to, you just go, go, stop. That's all they do. And we said, John, God, he's dead, God rest him. I said, John, you know you've got to toss up, don't you, before the show? He said, I can't toss up. I said, what? He said, I can't. I said, you can't. I give him a coin. And honest to God, this is what he did, right? Can you, can you see what I'm doing? This is what he did. He went, I can right, see. This is, hang on, lads. This is exactly what he did, right? He went. <laughs> <laughs> is he Irish? Irish? And the guy said, Ed's, and he went like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I told the, the lady came back the next day, and I said, it was ever so funny with John. She said, and you know what she did? A bottle went. She went on, and she went like this. What is it? And the fellow went, Ed's. <laughs> That's it. Isn't that lovely? People say, oh, are we near? I could tell you another story. <laughs> yeah, we're enjoying that better than the program. <laughs> should whack a few in, shouldn't we? Yeah. Right, oh, very good. Very good, Chuck. We're having a smashy time. We're... 
Great fun. <laughs> I'm glad I come now. <laughs> We're glad you came. <laughs> oh, all right, back to serious. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Go. Good night, John boy. Card number nine is giving us number 40, which is the tiger. Born under the Chinese sign of the tiger, you are very special. But what match is it going to give us? It's going to give us Wigan Athletic and Cambridge United. <laughs> and finally, my last card, which is, oh, the money card. Oh. The Ace of Pentacles. Oh. And it's We're number 22. Swansea, number Bristol 22 City. Number 22 is going to be Carlisle Paris. United. And yes, the oh. yes that's the one. Same as you, John. Yes, and that's the one. And they, Tom, are my ten draws for this week. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> if you believe that Celtic are going to draw with hearts, you can juggle jam. Now... <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're a Brighton B, of course. You were a Brighton B when you were a little, a little nipper. And uh, uh, Brentford. A Brentford B, oh, I beg your yes. pardon. I was a baby B. A baby B. I was, I think this I. And, of course, you know, it, it, the only thing about that is it's not going to be our week because apparently Carol and John, they're going to be the big features this week. You're a Scorpio, I'm an Aquarian, no good. Yeah. Do you want to do it again, Brentford B? Yeah. Okay. Just to show how knowledgeable you are. Yes. we got five. Between us, Between five out of Isn't that amazing? Same. See how it's yeah. tallied? And this is the real thing. It's not well, should, we should say that. Should we say that? That'd be yeah, nice, wouldn't it? That. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. <laughs> Make it look like we know, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We've all been Carol knew. She's the one. You can tell she's the statistical the one. Statistical. <laughs> You're very statistical, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> Well done, the Brentford B. Now, if the figures are right, it means that Carol and John between them have got five yeah. of those draws. In that, been working see, on Cancer the Capricorn. Cancer Capricorn, there are lucky yep. signs. Well, it's yeah. all in the cards, but what about you and me, Tom? What can I say? You're a Scorpio. Yep. I'm an Aquarian. We've had it. We're not going to get a look in. <laughs> we are not going to get a look in, are we? No, not no, at no, all. You, if you look out very carefully now, you may get a look in with some money as we go through Russell's grantable predictions. Go on, Russell. Here we are. And it's Southend United versus Norwich City, Stoke City versus Barnsley, Brighton and Hove Albion, Brentford, Carlisle United, Stockport County, Chester City versus Cardiff City, Hereford United, Northampton Town, Wigan Athletic, Cambridge United, Glasgow Celtic. I'm the machine. Oh, oh sorry. Okay. I was just really going very well, though. I was, I, was, I was really just interested. Just in case you got it wrong, like number eight. <laughs> They had a lovely shot of your backside doing I was it? very, very wow. impressed. Weren't you impressed with that? Yeah. Shall I tell you, shall I tell you a Yorkshire story while I've got a minute? That number eight. <laughs> I don't know. I was, I was writing a book of like kind of a, a, kind of a comedy autobiography. The stories of people I work with like Tommy Cooper and lovely Roy Castle and what have you. And during the course of writing the book, they, they rang me up and they said, we're going to trap lovely Marty Kane for This Is Your Life. Would you help us? We're going to pretend you're teaching her to play golf and get her on the golf course and we'll pounce with the cameras. I said, okay. Now, you know Marty, bless her heart, she was a very lovely lady, very sharp. There was no, and I thought, you know, she could suss this pretty quick. So the idea is to keep her occupied and I thought the best way is to get her to talk to me about stories. And I'm saying to Marty, I'm writing this book, love, you know, can you, have you got a good Yorkshire story? She said, I'll tell you what, there was a fellow called Jeff Love, black guy, who was a band leader. Does anyone remember Jeff Love? Yeah. Max Bygraves, band leader. Now, he, do you know he was, I, he was from Barnsley? Did you know? Yeah. Because his son is um, uh, uh, Adrian Love, the DJ. So I did, I'd never met Jeff, apparently he was a lovely man. So he was talking to Marty once about having trouble with an American girl singer that came to the Palladium. And he said to it, and you know what, Marty? She came into the Palladium and she drank a complete half pint of whiskey straight down. And Marty said, was it neat? He said, nay, it was middle of afternoon. <laughs> Isn't, that Isn't that lovely? <laughs> you know, hey? No. And you know, that, you know my lovely Roy Castle, he, he had a great story. Uh, he was working at a club in, in Newcastle, it was a brewery club. 
And it's Saturday night, it's about 900 in up for the cup, giving it the bifters, you know. Got their heads back so they won't spill any, you know. <laughs> and he wants to do a story about the Savoy Grill in London, but he's not sure they know where it is, you see. So he said, uh, the other week, I was in the Savoy Grill. For those who don't know, that's in London. And a drunk over there shouted, where's London? <laughs> and Roy said, well, it's south of Sunderland, I'll tell you that. And a drunk over there said, where's Sunderland? <laughs> and this fella said, second from bottom. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? So are we, are we done? <laughs> Shall I do an Irish one? Do an Irish one. Are there any Irish people in? Yeah. All right, just for you then, just for you. The two Irish fellas in the pub drinking, and on the wall opposite was a full-length mirror. And one said, Mick, don't look now, but there's two fellas over there, the image of us. <laughs> Mick said, wait, he said, over there. He said, God bless us, they're wearing the same clothes and everything. I'm going to buy them a drink. His mate said, sit down, they're coming over here. So, Do you, know the, do you know the most famous man in history, and he's, been, he's now forgotten, and it's a, a travesty, because he's the most famous Irishman in history, was a fellow called Tom McInerney. I know it sounds like three people, but... <laughs> Who's in there? Tom McInerney. Two of you have come out. So, Tom McInerney was the only survivor of Custer's last stand. I bet you didn't know that. He was the, honestly, last one alive, and he was there, and all the Indians had shot everyone. Custer and all the horses gone, and Tom sat there, wounded, sat there and all his Indians chasing around and he said if there's anyone in heaven can help me St. Patrick there can you help me and St. Patrick come in a vision and he said what is it Tom he said can you help me St. Pat and St. Patrick said well look he said I can help you but he said like I can't change history do you know what I mean he said what do you mean he said well like I think you know if I help you I'll have to help the Indians you know so like and I'll have to give them more than you because there's more of them so he said like whatever you ask for they'll have to have two <laughs> He said, what do you mean? He said, well, if you, if you ask for a rifle, they'll have to have two rifles. And if you ask for a pistol, they'll have to have two pistols. And Tom said, well, I'll have a glass eye then. <laughs> I like that. Are we in? Are we still not there? Okay. The composite one. Are you building a house? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was, I was in a town called Dorky, it's just south of Dublin. My Pat's in the audience, she'll tell you, it's absolutely true. They opened a pizza parlour in Dorky High Street. And only the Irish would have the nerve to put a sign in a shop window. Do you know what it said? Special opening offer. Buy one for the price of two. <laughs> and get another completely free. <laughs> and do you know, the place was packed. And... They're lovely, aren't they? So we should have done a joke, really. <laughs> all clean. Oh, yes, all clean. <laughs> all right, then. Are we, we're almost there? We're almost there. We're almost there. Isn't it funny how people sing funny in pubs? Have you ever been in a pub on a Friday? <laughs> and, and you know a pub on a Friday? You're with people you couldn't invent, aren't you? <laughs> I mean, they must live in the pub because you never see them in the street. <laughs> Do you? I mean, there's a drunk, there's a, yeah, there's a drunk in the corner, he's got a budgie on a lead. <laughs> he said, I wasn't going to come, but it dragged me out, you know, good <laughs> and, and you know when they sing, they sing funny, like almost, I mean, take any song, you get a thing like, uh, um, My Mother's Eyes, you know. Now, the guy that sang it was a warm, bright and guiding light. Have you ever heard a drunk singing that? Who will who won the pretty? <laughs> And they always say, I said, I said, guiding light. <laughs> <laughs> no, and you see them, I can't move around, I wish I could move around, I've I'm, I'm got an umbilical here, but anyway. <laughs> well, fortunately, it doesn't hurt. Um, but have you ever watched drunk stories? See, I tell drunk stories of my act. I mean, I, my favourite one is the front doorbell that rang, and the woman opened it, there's 25 drunks walking round the step. And one of them said, are you Mrs. McBride? She said, yeah. He said, will you tell us which one's Paul so the rest of us can go home? He said, and, <laughs> and, and, and you, know, you know when you tell that, everyone laughs. Everyone there laughed at that. Do you know why? Everybody loves a drunk. Unless he's going home to your house. <laughs> Isn't it true? All that. Because lads, you go home like that, it's World War III. I mean, you come out of the pub like a little hovercraft, haven't you? you know. 
And ladies, all the married ladies, if your husband comes home drunk, you should be grateful because some of them don't make it. <laughs> They're out all night in gardens and everywhere. <laughs> and there's nothing sadder than seeing a full-grown British chap lying face down on somebody's lawn <laughs> with two handfuls of grass shouting, bring a ladder. And his mate looking for one. And it's not a... But they're wonderful, aren't they? Are we, are we near? I don't know. I'm just rambling. All right. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> let me tell you my own... Uh, yes? Uh, no, I don't have bothered, you know. Uh, if you want to start, you know, start. I'm not... Uh, shall I? All right. <laughs> I've got a mate in Liverpool called Ray. Nice fellow, Ray. He's the unluckiest man in the world. I mean, honest, this fellow's... All, I mean, I was home recently. I said, how's it going, Ray? He said, burglars. I said, no, he said, burglars. I said, ransack. He said, funny enough, no. He said, they never took the telly and they didn't even take the video. He said, all they took was the remote control. I said, is that all? He said, yeah, but every night they drive past the house changing channels. <laughs> and... <laughs> and we were... We're in the pub and... I, I, I'm all right, but yeah. I, and have you ever watched... Have you ever watched two people who've been drinking that long that they've lost the plot? You know what I mean? I, the head's gone, but the mouth's still working. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're watching one now, actually. Anyway, um, well, there's these two fellas. One of them was gone. He had, like, about one centimetre of burning cigarette on his lip like that. His left eye was streaming water from the smoke. He had teeth queuing up to get to the front, and he's gone. <laughs> he slumped like that, see? Uh, his, his mate was stood up, but he was swaying like an MFI wardrobe. You know? <laughs> Allegedly. And... Um, And the, <laughs> the swayer said to the slumper, right, he said, Do you know, do you know them, um, eh, do you know them, eh, uh, eh, uh, do you know them satellite dishes? His mate said, yeah. He said, what's those little boxes at the back? His mate said, council houses. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, uh, Okay. Oh, we're doing the programme, aren't we? Oh, are you? Oh, yeah. Back to the gold, blimey. Yeah. Sorry about, about that. that. <laughs> Lovely audience. Oh, great. Sorry, Ross. This is fine. Are we ready? He's coming at you now. Look out. Say nothing. Five, Mind your back, <coughs> children. Here we go. Ready? Southend United versus Norwich City, Stoke City versus Barnsley, Brighton and Hove Albion versus Brentford, Carlisle United versus Stockport County, Chester City versus Cardiff City, Hereford United versus Northampton Town, Wigan Athletic versus Cambridge United, Glasgow Celtic and Heart of Midlothian, Motherwell and Falkirk, East Stellingshire and Brecon City, Tom. Whoa. <laughs> Russell. Although if Celtic draw with hearts, I'll tell you what, I'll juggle jam. Now, we come to what I think is always the nicest part of the X Factor, that's meeting people who've actually won the pools. You have won the grand total of £1,338,569.40! p. <laughs> No. The light was on, so I spoke, you know. Apologies, we just need to do that again. Sure. The whole thing sounds like three syllables. <laughs> but it's going very well. Yeah. You're like my wife, Tom. She works when the red light comes on. Does she? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, okay then. Ta <laughs> And, uh, you know, with all, the, uh, all these uh, Scottish tips, later on I'll do something Scottish, I'll throw up in the phone well? box. <laughs> right. Is Russell doing it all again? No, no. You are? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I know. Not to worry, sir. 
<laughs> you can do it because I you know you. You're it. one of the lads. You Thank can do you. It. You're a, you're a Thank you, Tom. A trooper. Bedford, Bedford. <laughs> <laughs> I was a haven mate. Oh, and a haven mate as well. <laughs> Indeed, you were. Well, I was a great and coat. a great actor, this fellow. I tell you what, a brilliant actor. Seriously. <laughs> yes. There you are. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, modest. But it's true. <laughs> I've taken. <laughs> Southern United, Norwich City, Stoke City, Barnsley, Brighton and Hove Albion and Brentford, Carlisle United, Stockport County, Chester City and Cardiff City, Hereford United, Northampton Town, Wigan Athletic versus Cambridge United, Glasgow Celtic and Heart of Midlothian, Motherwell v East Falkirk, East Stirlingshire versus Brecon City, Tom. <laughs> Well done, Russell Lowell. Oh. oh. Not again. Not again. We've got to go. Uh, oh, I no. thought you were very prompt. Sorry, I, don't know what's, uh... I thought they were very prompt. I tell you what, Russell, you never foresaw this, did you? Yeah. <laughs> you read, Tom, you read your Daily Mirror and it says I'll have communicational difficulties today. <laughs> oh, it's going It's very a good well. job I was taught electrocution by my mum. You were, you were. Nice lady too. Or elocution to you. Yes. Very nice. <laughs> so there we are. Five seconds. Sorry, Three. <laughs> Southend United versus Norwich City, Stoke City versus Barnsley, Brighton and Hove Albion v Brentford, Carlisle United versus Stockport County, Chester City v Cardiff City, Hereford United versus Northampton Town, Wigan Athletic versus Cambridge United, Glasgow Celtic v Heart of Midlothian, Motherwell versus Falkirk, and East Stirlingshire versus Brecon City. Wow. Town. Very good. Well done, Russell, thank you. Although, if you believe Celtic are going to draw with hearts, you can juggle jam. Now, we come to what I think is always the nicest part of the X Factor, that's meeting people who have actually won the pools. You have won the grand total of... £1,338,569.40! <laughs> And will you please welcome two of that syndicate from Hull, Gordon and Barbara Turner. Welcome. And a lot of money down to the last 40p. Well done. Definitely. Now, you know, I mean, you obviously had some idea that you won a lot of money, but you didn't know, did you know before you actually went to the presentation how much? No, not at all. No. Not at all. I, I remember, uh, seriously, the one time I actually won a lot of money on the pools myself, it was the first time anyone won three quarters of a million pounds, and I was one number out. I, I missed it by one. And they asked me to present the cheque. You should have seen my face. I was like that. <laughs> <laughs> I won about a thousand quid or something. But uh, how did you, how, was it all scientific, the way you picked your numbers, the way we're doing it, or what? No. Um, when we decided on the syndicate, we decided we'd literally draw them out of a bag, right. was the numbers which is what we did and about five of the numbers are all together in the 30s and when we drew them out Gordon said well that will never ever come up we'll change those and I said no that's how they've come out that's how they stay yeah. and he was a bit miffed but uh, I'm real pleased I insist <laughs> yeah, and you've got the bag with it is that, is that right yes we have yes all right if you want to wave it around Gordon that's wave it to that side they could do with some help <laughs> you can pick it on your nose with some of the, the things you, you think are going to come off, I'll tell you. Well, congratulations on winning it, and a nicer couple couldn't have done that. Well, well done, we wish you well, we wish you well at home as well, of course. We hope everyone would win a million pounds, well, starting with us, if you don't mind. Our computer buds have been busy feeding in the selections from Carol, John and Russell. So here is our Big Ten for this week. Number four, Middlesbrough v Everton. Number five, QPR v Arsenal. Number 9, Birmingham v Sheffield United. Number 14, Southend against Norwich. 
Number 15, Stoke v. Barnsley. Number 19, Brighton and Hove Albion against Brentford. Number 22, Carlisle v. Stockport. 25, Swansea v. Bristol City. 38, Scarborough v. Hartlepool. 43, Motherwell v. Falkirk. There's our top 10. If you didn't have time to write them down, don't worry. All the team's selections on teletext, page 369. All right? So that's where we have to draw the line this week. But remember, if you're not a winner, don't be cross. Join us next week, and we'll pool our resources. Till then, see you. Bye-bye. Sorry, Carol. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Carol. Some pickups, right? Okay. Yes. Can, can Russell read his list again? I'd like to hear it. <laughs> Could we do that? I think it'd be rather nice. It's just the way he says Glasgow Celtic. Yeah. You'll, you'll never forget that list, will you? You sleep with that tonight. <laughs> I was very impressed because you knew all that. In the morning, in the mirror, yeah, if you're Aquarius, beware of bloody lists. That's what I'm going to take a shot with Jonathan Carroll looking at Russell smiling and you will please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, very nice. Uh, over there. Hey, Russell over there. Is he at his board? Yeah. Russell over there. Go. Off you go. Off you go. Yeah. Poor old. Poor old. Well, John Helm, he can't, he can't do it unless I actually go there. Da, yeah. da, da, da. yeah, give us a strict teaser. He's off his eye line. <laughs> what, my home strip? Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> the minute you wait in the joint. Cary Grant, did you say? Cary Grant. Say Cary Grant. Cary Any Grant. relation? No, Cary Grant. Grant. Cary Grant is tarot cards. Hugh Tarrant. Grant? Hugh Grant. Oh, yeah. So, no relation. A woman wrote to me once after the Hugh Grant business and said, Dear Russell, I'm so sorry you got caught in Los Angeles. <laughs> okay, I so we have to I don't believe now. you would have done it. She's right. No speaking. Is that your mother? <laughs> it weren't that bad, John. <laughs> John and Carol looking towards Tom, if you will, please. <laughs> <laughs> Elephant man. <laughs> Am I in shot now? Yeah. No, that's just What's <laughs> <laughs> that one? <laughs> <laughs> Not too serious, I hope. Am I, and I, are you on me now? Yes, I'm looking you down and looking at Russell. <laughs> 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 this is the best part of the night, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> now do your intelligent look, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
Oh, that's it. That's the one. Yeah. Quizzical. You did that on CrossFit sometimes. Quizzical. Yeah. Sensitive. <laughs> Perplexed. Think about Richard Wright. <laughs> <laughs> We're just checking anything out. Yeah. Could we After have that, your... I'm going to write bum on a wall and run away. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bear with us a second. We're just checking if there's anything else. No problem. Whatever you want, pal. We're just here, you a know, just happy to be here. your win. <laughs> it's been wonderful. We really enjoyed it. Everybody on the coach trip said the same. <laughs> <laughs> Had a smashing time and everybody in the home sends their love. Everybody yeah. in the house. <laughs> <laughs> They've written this card. I'm sorry it's in yeah. crayon, but they won't give us anything sharp. <laughs> We have an oval team dispenser on the way back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, can I talk? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's ever stopped you I before. Said, that's true. <laughs> I was at a dinner with the. When I say the late Archbishop of no, he hasn't died, but the Archbishop of Canterbury that's just retired, right? I was at this dinner, and this is not true, but I mean, who's going to argue with the Archbishop of Canterbury? He said he, he was going to visit some people in a place called Reading, which is just south of London. So he gets on a Southern Rail train, like, like Southern Electric, you know. And he gets on, and it's one of them compartment trains, and it's packed. This is, I'm not my story, this is his story, oh, right? Wow. So it, this train's packed, and he's squeezing, and he sees a compartment, there's only seven people in it, so he gets in, and he's only dressed like a priest or a, a vicar, you know, with the, he's not, he hasn't got all the business on, he's just got a collar, you know. So he squeezes in amongst these seven people, he's got the evening standard, he's reading the pages, and the train takes off. Now, what he doesn't know is, there's been an outing from an asylum down the line. They've been into London to see Madame de Swords, and they're all on the train, and he's sat among seven of them, and he doesn't know that, see? So he, he's going on, about two stops down the line, the, the nurse comes in with a clipboard to check them all. And he walked in, and he went, one, two, three, who are you? He said, the Archbishop of Canterbury, four, five, <laughs> it's not lovely. <laughs> Can't be true. Oh, look, there, there, there you are. What a lovely audience you are, look at that, my God. Okay, so a few smiles, but nothing too forced. Yeah. <laughs> Show your teeth, everyone. Pass them round. Yeah. <laughs> 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 your big moment of fame, if this ever goes out. Can, sorry, can, can all the ugly people go to the back, please? Come on, you know who you are. <laughs> I know there's a bloke with a cap on we've just seen that. Where's the bloke? A chap with a cap there. He put, he put his head down there. DHSS, benefits agency. Get him there. There was a kid in our class at school. He was that ugly, he had shutters on his pram when he was a baby. <laughs> Honestly. Do you know, his mother used to feed him with a catapult. And... She had to tie meat round his neck so the dog would play with him. He was an ugly boy. <laughs> He's a magistrate now. And, um, yeah. <laughs> Talking about that, you know, this is a seriously true story. If there's any scousers in the audience, they'll bear this out. This is a seriously true story. My mate Ray, I, told, I, this is, I, I, nearly, I know Ray, I've known him since we were four. I nearly married his sister, actually. And uh, my Pat's out here, and she'll tell you, this is my Pat's favourite story. My mate Ray was in, he drives a bread van for Mother's Pride Bakeries, you know, that's, that's his job. And uh, there, was a, there was a Crown Court case in Liverpool and the accused was a German chap, this is true. And when they got in court they realised this German couldn't speak any English. And none of the legal people could speak German. So they're stuck, you see. So the judge said, is there anybody <laughs> in the gallery who can speak German? My mate Ray, yeah. <laughs> bread van driver, Mother's Pride. One O-level, woodwork. Here. <laughs> T-shirt, in God we trust, all others pay cash. Here. <laughs> so the judge said, come down, put him on the payroll, you can interpret. So he's come down, he's got the sweat and the jeans and the pumps. And, he's, <laughs> and the judge said to him, ask him to tell you where he was before he came to Liverpool. And Ray said, where were you? <laughs> And they did him for contempt. <laughs> and he said to the judge, but I saw the film The Longest Day and all the Germans talk like that. <laughs> Good story, it's nice too. Yeah, that's nice.
gentlemen, your applause has been recorded and will be sent to a lesser show. <laughs> okay. Are we, are we clear? I'll tell them one story and then we'll get them out, all right. Sound, just sound, am I, I'm not breaking any rules by taking me on mic off, am I? Thank you very much, thank you very much. I think a round of You've been a smash girl, you know, you, you've been, I, I was, I'm going to let you go now because, oh, that's a, I feel like Moses, let my people go. But I, can I tell you a totally true story? Now, this could have happened anywhere. It happened in Liverpool, it could have happened in Glasgow, Swansea, Edinburgh, Leeds, Bradford. It, could, it happened in my town, but isn't this a great story? There's a pub in Liverpool, truly, called the Eagle and Child, and it's a really rough pub. I'm talking like Kate A.D. is a barmaid, you know what I mean? <laughs> this is a heavy... I want to tell you because it's a football story. Everton have played Liverpool in a big cup tie that day, right, and at, at about seven o'clock at night in this really rough pub, twelve fellas come in, six in blue and white, six in red and white, and they sit by the bar at a table and they start drinking pints of lager and whiskies, nice and steady, all night. Seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine, ten, no problem. Ten, fifteen, lovely. Twenty past ten, they start arguing about the match and the coats are coming off. I'll tell you something else, Bart. So quick as a flash, the manager's over. He said, hey, come on, lads, please, calm down. Come on, we've had a smashing night. Come on, please. If you want to fight, go in the car park. This great big fella gets up and says to the manager, I'll come in the car park with you. He said, oh, not with me. I mean, if you want to fight amongst yourselves, you know. He said, I heard you say, come in the car park. So now the manager's going out to fight Schwarzenegger. On his way, he takes his wig off, gives it to the barmaid, and says, mind that, and watch the others. He's only out 20 seconds, he's back in. He said, right, the rest of you is outside. They said, what happened to Big Charlie? They go outside, Big Charlie's on the floor, gob split. They said, what happened to you? He said, I don't know. He said, I'm standing here waiting for the manager, and this bald fella come up and buttered me in the face. <laughs> yeah, lovely. You've been smashing, thanks for coming. Please come again if you see, if, if, if they offer you tickets, because you're a wonderful audience. Good night, and God bless you all.